To understand the concept of margin, let's kick off with a simple analogy. David wants to buy a house for a million, but saving the entire sum required is unrealistic. So he opts to borrow the money from his bank. The bank, however, requires that David puts down 10% of the total amount he wishes to borrow. This is the down payment or deposit. Having made the 100,000 down payment, the bank entrusts David with the control of a larger sum of money so that he can buy his house. Trading on margin is similar to David's situation. A trader can enter into a trade that represents more value than the capital, the money in other words, that they have in their account. Just as David was required to put down a percentage of the sum he borrowed, so traders are only required to put down a fixed percentage of the total amount they wish to trade. When applying for a mortgage, this is referred to as the down payment or deposit. But in trading, this fixed percentage is called the margin requirement and the amount of money required to trade is called the nominal margin requirement. Margin requirements vary from currency pair to currency pair and also from broker to broker. Just as the required down payment for buying a house is defined by the bank lending the money, so too is the margin requirement at the discretion of the Forex broker. And also note that margin requirement can be subject to change. Let's take a look at how we calculate the nominal margin requirement. Nominal margin requirement equals the currency specific margin requirement times the nominal size of trade. Here's an example. If the margin requirement for euro dollar is 2%, and a trader wishes to open a 1 million euro dollar position on the account, the minimum required amount on the account would be 20,000 euros because a 2% margin requirement times a million euro dollar is 20,000 euros. But be aware, a change in margin requirements can happen quickly. It's a protective measure by the broker to counter any increase in risk caused by, for example, geopolitical events or changes in monetary policies. Let's look at another example. If a currency cross is subject to a margin change from 2% to, say, 10% due to the chances of significant increased volatility, the trader would need to allocate an additional 8% of his account balance to cover the new margin requirements. Building on the example above, this would mean a 10% margin requirement times a million euro dollar, which equals 100,000 euros, a significant increase on the original 20,000 euros. So how do you know how much you have left in your account to trade with at any one time? Well, most trading platforms show how much of your margin is currently being utilised, often described by a percentage value. Take, for example, a trading account with a net balance of €50,000. If no trades are opened, the margin being used is 0%. A euro dollar trade of €1 million is then opened. With a euro dollar margin requirement at 2%, this equates to a nominal amount of 20,000 euros. The margin used is now 20,000 euros divided by 50,000 times 100, which equals 40%. Now a second trade of 300,000 dollar yen is placed. The dollar yen margin requirement is 5%. So this equals 15,000 euros. The used margin for the entire account is now 20,000 plus 15,000 divided by 50,000 times 100, which equals 70%. So this simplified example demonstrates how each trade placed affects the available margin, meaning how much the trader has left to trade with. 
It's essential for a Forex trader to understand how this works and to monitor their account and positions closely. Continuing our example, imagine a scenario where the dollar-yen margin requirement increased to 15%. For sake of simplicity, let's assume that neither of the two trades has changed in value. A dollar-yen trade of 300,000 with a 15% margin equals 45,000 euros. This is a net change of 30,000 euros that the trader will have to provide as collateral. In this particular example, this net change exceeds the account balance. In such a scenario, the trader usually receives a margin call. Depending on the policy of the broker, this means that the trader will either have to transfer additional funds to his account or close part of or all of the trade. In extreme scenarios, the broker may intervene and close the trade on behalf of the trader. As neither traders nor brokers are able to influence the market forces that influence margin requirements, successful traders understand how to limit their risk by limiting the size of their positions and closely monitoring how much margin is used as leverage at any one time. Let's go back to our example of David buying a house. His brother Steve has a different approach. He's more speculative and aggressive. Steve has a million dollars in his bank account, but realizes that instead of buying one house without borrowing any money from the bank, he can make 10 down payments of 100,000 and buy 10 houses. He does so with the expectation that he can sell the houses for more than their total current value of a million. This way, Steve has effectively leveraged the amount of money in his account. As exchange rates are moving relatively little on an average trading day, it's common in the Forex industry to trade with leverage. In this way, the potential earnings can be larger from a smaller investment. How many times leverage is permitted for each currency is defined by the broker. The minimum margin requirement as described before. But beware, while leverage can be tempting with the potential to magnify returns, it's also associated with considerable risk as potential losses are also magnified. The maximum amount of leverage available to a trader is defined by the margin requirement for each specific currency pair. The amount of leverage can be calculated like this. Leverage equals 100 divided by the margin requirement in percent. So if the margin requirement is 2%, then 100 divided by 2% equals 50. This means that the leverage is 50 times. So for every one unit traded, you are able to control 50 units. 2% leverage is therefore the same as 50 to 1 leverage. As we increase the margin requirement from 2% to 3 to 4 and so on, we can clearly see how the leverage decreases. Trader A has 50,000 euros for a trade and buys a 100,000 euro dollar. In so doing, he has leveraged his trade 2 to 1. This means that every time euro dollar appreciates 1%, the net value of his trade will increase by 2%. Conversely, if euro dollar depreciated by 1%, his trade would lose 2% of its value. Trader B also holds 50,000 euros, but is more aggressive and therefore buys 2.5 million euro dollar. Trader B has now leveraged his trade 50 to 1. If euro dollar goes up 1%, his trade will go up 50%. And conversely, if euro dollar goes down 1%, the net worth of this trade is down by 50%. On this chart, we have the relative loss or gain of a trade, shown on the y-axis, corresponding to percentage movements for a currency on the x-axis. Let's plot some lines that show the effects of leverage on a trade. 
With 2 to 1 leverage, the blue line, we can see what happens if a currency moves by plus 10 or minus 10 percent. And as we increase the leverage, we can then see how both the returns and losses are amplified. So let's review what you've learned in this introduction to leverage. Trading on a margin means only having to put down a percentage of the amount you wish to trade. Margin enables you to leverage your account balance to control larger sums and the amount of leverage available depends on the margin requirements. Remember, leverage can magnify your potential profit, but it can also magnify your potential losses. Careful consideration is advised when choosing how much leverage to apply.